Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to turn a fraction into a decimal, in particular a repeating decimal, and in the second part of the video we're going to go the other way, and we're going to talk about how to turn a repeating decimal into a fraction. Now if you are already familiar with how to do long division, then you can skip the first part of this video and uh, just fast forward to when I start talking about turning a repeating decimal into a fraction. But if you need a little bit of extra help with long division, then keep watching the first part here. So if I have this fraction 5 over 99 and I want to write that as a decimal, how would I do that? I would put the numerator, which is the dividend, inside the long division symbol, and I would put the denominator, which is the divisor, on the outside. And then here are the steps that I always use with long division. 1 into 2 multiply 3 subtract 4 bring down. So step 1, how many times does 99 go into 5? 0 times. 99 doesn't go into 5, 5 is, big, uh, five is smaller than 99. Step two, two uh, 0 times 99 is 0. Step 3, subtract. 5 minus 0 is 5. Step 4, bring down. Since I have nothing to bring down, but I didn't get a 0 over here, I need to put a decimal here and here. Then I'll put a 0 over here and then bring that down. Now back to step 1. How many times can 99 go into 50? Still 0 times, because 99 is bigger than 50. Step 2, 0 times 99 is 0. Step 3, subtract. Step 4, bring down. I didn't get uh, 0 over here, I got 50. Alright, back to step 1. How many times can 99 go into 500? The answer would be 5 times. You could estimate that if you're not sure. So 99 is very close to 100, right? And 100 would go into 500 five times. 99 would also go into 500 five times. Okay, and f 5 times 99 would give us 495. If you don't believe me, you can do the math yourself. And then let's subtract here. I can't take 5 away from 0. Uh, I can't take 5 away from 0. I can't borrow from 0. But I can borrow from this 5. That becomes a 4. Put a 1 next to this 0. Then borrow from the 10, that becomes a 9, put a 1 next to this one. So 10 minus 5 is 5, and then I have 9 minus 9, which is nothing, and 4 minus 4, which is nothing. Okay, so now I am back to, uh, let's see, what did I just do? I subtracted, so now I'm at step 4 here, which is to bring down. So let's put another 0 in here and bring that down. And now I'm back to step 1, which is how many times can 99 go into 50? But wait a minute, I answered that exact question right back over here. And that led me to this. And if I do it again, then eventually I'll get another 50 over here. I'll get another 50 over here. So I'm just going to be repeating this process over and over and over again. I would say, just like I said up here, I would say 99 goes into 50 zero times. And then I get zero here. I subtract, bring down another zero to get 500. Right, all of all of the stuff that I did over here, I would end up just doing that again over here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to keep getting zero five zero five zero five, just like that. So obviously I don't want to do that forever. So instead of doing that forever, what we do is we put a bar over the repeating part, which is in this case both the zero and the five, and that tells us that our answer is zero point. 0505005 and so on and so forth without end, okay? So that's how to turn a fraction into a decimal, is you just divide the numerator by the denominator, and if you see that uh, part of the decimal is repeating, then you just put a bar over that part. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to something new. Hopefully that was a review for you. I'm sure you've done long division before. But now we're going to move on to something new, which is if I already know that I have a repeating decimal, what if I wanted to go the other way and turn it into a fraction? Well, here's how we would do that. There are going to be four steps. So we'll just take this step by step. Step one is we're going to give the decimal a name. 
This means setting it equal to a letter of your choice, and I'm going to choose the letter N. So let's say that this decimal's name is N. So I'm going to write over here N equals 0 0.7 repeating, except you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to write out some sevens here. 0 0.7 with the bar over it literally means 0 0.7777777 and on and on and on forever, right? Okay, so I gave my decimal a name. Now I'm up to step two, which is multiply both sides by a power of 10. A power of 10 could be 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean 10. A power of, so for example, like 10 to the third power is a thousand, right? So a thousand is a power of 10, we say. Even the number one is a power of 10 because 10 to the zero power is one. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by a power of 10 so that the original decimal is again after the decimal point. So if I were to take this decimal point and move it in this case, all I would have to do is move it one space to the right. So the new decimal point would be over here. Now, what's after my new decimal point? It's seven, 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 and so on forever, which is the exact same thing that I had before. So if I move this just one space to the right, then I get after the decimal point, the same exact thing that I had after the decimal point to begin with. So since to move a decimal point one space to the right, I need to multiply it by 10, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply, oops, I'm gonna multiply both sides here by 10. And the result of that is 10 times N is just 10 N. And on the other side, 0 0.777 blah, 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 times 10, well, times 10, like we said, it would move the decimal point one space to the right. So then I would get 7.7777, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So if n is equal to 0 0.7 repeating, then 10n is equal to 7.7 .7 repeating. Now, step three is to subtract n from both sides of the equation. This will leave you with a number multiplying n on one side of the equation and a whole number on the other. So let's do that. Let's subtract n from both sides. This might look strange to you for a second, but just bear with me. Over here, you should be familiar with how to do this. So 10n minus n, well, n is the same as 1n. So 10n minus 1n is just 9n. So that wasn't too tough over here. Now over here, you might be a little bit confused. You might be thinking, well, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to add or subtract unlike terms. And this term obviously has an N in it, and this term does not have an N in it. I was told never to add or subtract unlike terms. So how in the world can I do this? Well, remember, we already know what N is. N is really just 0 0.77 repeating, right? So if I take 7.777 repeating, if I take 7.7 .7 repeating and I subtract the repeating part, then I'm just going to have seven left over. Um, yeah. Okay, so I hope that made sense, right? Over here, I had seven point blah, 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 blah. And what I'm doing is I'm subtracting away the blah, 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 blah part because N is just equal to that blah, 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 blah part. So what I'm left with is just the number that was in front of the decimal, which is just seven, okay? And now for step four, my last step, oops, my last step, or you know what? If that doesn't look too good, you could just replace this N with what it's, value is. So n is really just 0 0.7 repeating, right? Right? n is just equal to that. Okay, so I put it there. Hopefully, maybe that looks a little bit 
easier to understand why this minus n is, is just equal to 7, because all this stuff just goes away, and this is the only thing that's left. Okay? All right, so anyway, the last step, step 4, is to divide both sides by the coefficient in front of n in order to get n by itself. So it's just what you would normally do. If you had some equation 9n equals 7, and you were solving for n, then what would you do? You would divide both sides by this coefficient over here. So you divide both sides by 9, and that cancels. And so your final result is that n is equal to 7 over 9, or just, well, 7 divided by 9 is just 7 ninths. Okay? So there is our answer. And if you don't believe me, you could just do, so we're saying that n is 7 ninths, but back here we said that n was 0 0.7 repeating. So this and this must be the same thing. And in fact, they are. 7 divided by 9 does give us 0 0.7 repeating. The calculator is showing an 8 over here just because it can't go on forever. So if it were to go on, then it would have, it would be 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, just like that. But it obviously ran out of space. So it says to its, or it's programmed to round. So the next digit is also a 7. And if it rounds, then it's going to bump this 7 up to an 8. So really it is 0 0.7 repeating. It's just rounding there. Okay. So that's it, and what we're going to do now for the rest of the video is we're just going to do another couple of examples. All right, so let's do this, these last two examples quickly. Go back to step one, give the decimal a name. So I want to convert this into a fraction, so I'll say, I'll give it a name n again. n is equal to 0 0.616161 and so on and so forth, right? Step two... Multiply both sides by a power of 10 so that the original decimal is again after the decimal point. Now, in the last one, I multiplied by 10 on both sides. But if I were to do that this time, then I would get... So if this goes just one space to the right, then I would get 6.16161 and so forth. Now, what I have here after the decimal point is... 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, and so on, what I had back here was 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1. So that actually didn't work just multiplying it by 10. I did not get after the decimal point what I originally had after the decimal point. So instead of moving this just one space to the right, I'm going to have to move this two spaces to the right. So I'm going to have to multiply by a 100 now, if I do that, then I would get the uh, original, then I would get after the decimal point the original numbers that I had. So here I have 100 times n is just 100n. And then over here, if I multiply this by 100, then I would get 61.6161 and so on and so forth. Right, so I originally had 6-1 repeating, and now again I have 6-1 repeating. So that's good. Step three, subtract n from both sides of the equation. So let's do that. If I subtract n from this side, well, from this side it's just going to give me 100n minus 1n is 99n. And from this side, if I were to subtract n, remember n is just equal to this repeating part. So if I start with 61 point this repeating part, and then I subtract the repeating part away, then I'm just going to have 61 left over. Let me do that in blue. Okay, or if that is not quite clear to you, just replace n with the actual value of n. So remember, n we defined earlier 0 0.61 repeating. So if I'm taking 61.616161 and I subtract 0 0.616161 and so on, okay, then I'm just, all of this goes away and I'm just left with 61 minus 0, which is 61, okay? And then the last step is just to divide both sides by the coefficient in front of n, so just like solving equation in the, an equation in the normal way. 
So I would get rid of this coefficient by dividing it away. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So my final answer here is that n is equal to 61 over 99. But wait a minute, over here I said n is zero, equal to 0 0.61 repeating. Here I'm saying n is equal to 61 over 99. So these two things better be the same, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. But you can check if you do 61, 61 divided by 99, you do in fact get 0 0.61 repeating. And this 2 here is just because uh, the, the calculator rounded because it ran out of space. All right, let's just do one more example. This time we have three digits which are repeating, but it's the same idea. Okay, I'm sure you get the point by now, but we'll just do one more real quick. Step one, give the decimal a name, okay? So the name is N. Okay, step two, we're going to multiply by a power of 10 so that what we have after the decimal is the same as what we had before. So if I only move this one space, then after the decimal, I'm gonna have four, eight, three, four, eight, three. That's not what I had before. Before I had three, four, eight, three, four, eight, right? But if I move it two spaces, then after, then the new decimal would be here and I would have after the decimal, eight, three, four, eight, three, four. That's not what I had earlier, no good. If I move it three spaces, so the new decimal would be here, then after the decimal, I would have three, four, eight, three, four, eight, which is exactly what I had before after the decimal, three, four, eight, three, four, eight, and so on. So that's what I wanna do. I, move, I want to move the decimal three spaces to the right. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to multiply by a thousand. So let's multiply both sides by a thousand here. I'm just gonna stick with blue. It's getting annoying switching colors every five seconds. So that's going to give me a thousand N on the left equals, if I multiply this by a thousand, I'll get 348.348348 and so on and so forth. The 348 part is repeating. I'll subtract N from both sides. A thousand N minus one N is 999 N. And then remember, n is just the repeating part. So if I take this and subtract away the repeating part, then I get 348 left over. And then we'll just divide both sides by 999 to finish this up. So we get n equals 348 over 999. Okay, and you can see that 348 divided by 999 is in fact equal to 0 0.348348 and so on and so forth. Okay, by the way, I hope people are still watching. If you are still, well, you should be watching. And if you are, so of course, what am I even saying? Of course you're watching. Just wanna point out here that what if we wanted to convert 0 0.348 into a fraction, not 0 0.348 repeating, just 0 0.348, what would that be? Well, that would be 348 over a thousand, right? Because really this is just 348 thousandths. So that would be this decimal as a fraction. 0 0.348, 348, and so forth is actually very close to 0 0.348. These are not exactly the same, but they're they're very close to each other. So it does seem reasonable that our uh, results as a fraction are also very close to each other. Instead of 348 over 1,000, over here we got 348 over 999. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. So anyway, that's it and have a great day.